So uh, let's transition back to like uh, the the libraries that you maintain. Uh, yeah. One that I think is really cool and uh, ties into what you just said is testing library. Uh, testing library for React is uh, it's become the go to method of testing things. You test like a user, but you actually made uh, a library to test CLIs in the same manner. So could you walk us through what what that was like? Yeah. So uh, I was working on Plop, which is a CLI tool, and we had released. It was one of the two point something releases and it just happened to break everything like like literally would not start on Linux, wouldn't start on Windows, just just failed. And I think it ended up being something silly. It was like line encodings. And I was like, this is so silly, right? Like, like, why can't why can't I just spin up a CLI, run the darn thing and then tell me if it works or not? Right. Hey, wait a minute. You know what I mean? Like I had this moment of like, what if we just do that? Like, what, like, let's do it. So I was looking around and I found some options here, some options there. And I was like, honestly, I'm just going to like proc dot exec and see how that works out for me. And one thing led to another. And I was like, you know, I really want to be able to query what is shown in the CLI. And I, I only know of one API that I've been a fan of for a long time. Uh, so I just kind of ran with it. Um, I figured there was enough of the API that it was well enough to find that, that applied um, and just kept hacking on it. Yeah, that's, that's super cool. I feel like a lot of people think like, oh, how could people make tools? How do you like have this grand vision for a thing? What we found through talking to a lot of people is it just starts with playing around with something. Mm -hmm. It might not be the first version that hits either. Like we just talked to the Tamagui guy and he's like, this is my fourth iteration of this same concept. Yeah. So like a, a lot of open source battles and APIs and learnings are hard fought and you have to like do the time to get to the point where it's like, oh, I actually, I have something that's like cool and like unique. Mm -hmm. And it's funny you mentioned that like there, there's that like shifting goal of like the API, right? Like until you figure out what you want to go for, you kind of just got to keep kicking the ball in towards the general direction, right? Um, especially with CLI testing library, you know, the, the original testing libraries APIs are meant for the DOM. So it's wait for something to be shown in the DOM. So there's a bit of like, how do I convert that to be like, I, there's tools that I need that are not available. There's tools that I don't need that are available. What do I and don't I make available? Um, so I actually went through probably like five or six major Semver changes before I hit like a, a 0.1 alpha. Um, and I think that if you're in that stage of like API development, the one piece of advice that I would give is make a choice. Like as silly as that sounds, like sometimes like we can get stuck in our heads trying to make a decision and like really mull it over forever and ever and ever. But sometimes if you just stick to one, see how it goes and shift based off of that experience, it, it can be quite transformative. Yeah, absolutely. There's there's a lot of momentum, and especially when it's open source and especially when you're like trying to scratch an itch. There's a lot of momentum behind these things. And if you get stuck in analysis paralysis or get bogged down on like trying to come up with a perfect API, it's a great way to kill the project and to like burn yourself oh, yeah. out on it. And you're like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to work on this anymore. So going down the list, we're going to the, you're probably the, your biggest open source personal library to date. Uh, you mentioned it earlier. It's called house form. It's another react form library. So why did you choose to go down this route? Uh, yeah, well, why why would you go down the route that everyone has walked down at least a hundred times? I ask myself that a lot, to be fair. Um, so, I I I had my company work on a spike. Um, I went to one of my juniors and I was like, "Hey, we need forms. Our forms are in one of our applications atrocious. Right? Like they're they're just not acceptable. We've <laughs> got to change it. And we've got to change it today. The two that I've heard of uh, is Formic, the one that I used when I was at Hilton." Uh, and then the other one was uh, like React hook form, right? And and like, not that I'd use it, but I'd like heard of it, you know? Have fun. Welcome to Spike land. Uh, would you like a spike, please? I don't know, you know? Um, and he came back and he had this amazing presentation. It was like, this one's controlled, this one's uncontrolled. There's, there's final forms, there's this. And it like just laid it all out on the table. And I'm like, this is super, super good work. Shout out, Nick. Um, and I remember like, seeing all of his research and his key takeaway was like, these are good tools, but there's none that stand out to me that solve our exact needs. Like we have a really, really custom UI that has really, really weird validation requirements from the business. And if we want to, and it has to support React Native, so it has to be headless and support like custom UIs and all this other stuff. 
And if we want to go that route, we're going to have to tweak any of these tools that we use. Um, in addition, at the time, Formic was in a kind of questionable maintenance status, um, which I had written a blog post about. And, and again, we don't like like in open source, you don't owe anyone anything. Right. So this is not like a criticism of Jared, not a criticism of, of anyone that, that's working on Formic. Um, and they've brought it back. So this this criticism is invalid. Um, and sometime in February, I was at staying with my dad who uh, had some health issues and uh, he's doing fine. But but he uh, he just had to keep going to work for, for like a week. And I was like at his house, nothing to do in Virginia. And I'm like, why don't I just see how far I can get on this problem? Like like. I have an API in mind that I want to to explore that I think would work really well. And then boom, next thing I know, I have <laughs> version one and documentation and a website. And I kind of went a little uh, uh, wild on it. That's awesome. Man. That happens. I have many a project where I go wild for 95% of it and then uh, usually don't <laughs> ship it. So it's good that you shipped it in the end. <laughs> yeah. The bad news is I'm killing it. Oh, uh, tell us more. <laughs> so I, I like house form. And then Tanner Lindsley decides to drop a, a like GitHub gist of the API that he's going to be using to build Tanstack form. And it's better. It's, it's amazing. It's better. <laughs> uh, so I started talking with him. We, we went to a hackathon together and I was like talking with him. I'm like, Hey, you know, like I, we talked a little bit online about this. Uh, I would love to see this. And, you know, like I've been working on my own, you know, we got to talking and it was funny because Tanner's awesome. And in the span of a 30 minute conversation, it started from like, I don't know, you know, like your API has has pros and cons, but I'm not sure. Here's why, you know, safe default, super justified explanation. Right. And by the end of the 30 minute conversation, when we're pair programming, he's like, all right, you convinced me we're going to change the API to what you're working on. Um, so I'm actually working on Tanstack forms. Um, wow. It's a little slow in the running because I'm trying to wrap up my book. Um, but once I have a little bit more time, I'm going to really like, like hit the ground running and make sure that there's like, like migration guides. There's like, you know, um, a similar enough API that you can kind of convert from one to the other. Um, so I'm trying my best to, to work with, uh, Tanner to create Tanstack forms to be what house form couldn't be. Well, that's really exciting. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's another great facet of open source is prior art. Just like I, it's hard to explain and like justify to someone what open source is when they're not a developer. They're like, wait, so people just put it online and you can go read it. And it's like, it's such a simple concept, but it's, it's fueled so much innovation. Just like being able to go like, oh, I like this thing. How does it work? Break yeah. it open. And then you have the new shiny thing that uh, improves on it, makes it modern. But like those past ideas carry it. And it's really cool to see that you're just like, form library that you created on your dad's couch while you were doing nothing is now probably going to yes. contribute to one of the bigger forms libraries that'll be out once it, once it's been released. I know. Like I, I thought about that for so like, and, and that was such a weird hackathon because like you, you had to be invited to it and, and here I am and, and I'm invited to it because of house form. And here I am. I'm like, I built this thing in like five days. What are you all doing? Why am I here? And you know, it's like, I got to talk to Mark Erickson, maintainer of Redux. And I got to like, I was just like, what am I, why am I in these rooms? I don't belong here. You know what I mean? Like, like these are some of like the best engineers in, in the industry and I'm able to talk to them. That feels wrong. Well, you definitely did belong. I appreciate that. Yeah. I think, I think we've had a similar experience on this podcast sometimes where we're like, oh my God, like <laughs> starstruck a little bit. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs>